After going back to the drawing board some more, the TCL QM851G beats the Sony Bravia 9 for HDR, especially in game mode. Um, what we're going to do is a comparison of sorts, but I also want to extend an olive branch to Sony fans who feel very put out by the information you haven't heard anywhere else but here. Okay, so we're just going to dive into it because you don't have time to waste, and I respect your time, and I don't have time to waste either. We're going to start with a brand new picture profile. FPS mode, right? We're going to go down. We're going to hit reset. Okay, I'm going to show you in real time. It does not matter what you do. The Sony Bravia 9 is not beating the TCL QM8 for game mode. We're going to go ahead and brighten up the whole thing. Okay, so brightness is on max, contrast is on max, gamma for HDR, that's left at zero. We're at gradation preferred. We could go to brightness preferred. It'll make it brighter. We have black level at 50, black equalizer, turn that off. That just opens up shadow detail too much. Then we're going to make sure local contrast is on high or local dimming is on high. If you turn it to medium, peak highlights, small highlights will get brighter, but you'll have clouding. You don't want that. So you turn it to high. Um, and then peak luminance, we have it on high. Okay. With this particular setup, it looks terrible as, I mean, it, it will. Okay. But the nice thing about Sony TVs, but also a negative thing about Sony TVs is that they keep the white balance across an entire HDMI input. So since I've already calibrated the Bravia 9, all I got to do is go to expert one or expert two, and it'll, it'll be already buttoned up for me. So our white balance is already done. Now, uh, from there, we can try a couple different things to try to give the Sony back its image quality. And I would say, what? What would you think would give it the, the ability to beat the TCL? We can try to lower gamma all the way down. And that gives it more three-dimensionality, but that does not give it the color, right? So then we go, okay, well, it doesn't have the color. It has all the other stuff in the brightness department buttoned up. Well, we can try going into color and what? Turn on live color on high? Okay, let's turn live color on high. Doing that just makes it look like it's been looking. It, it's just pink. It's on high right now. Live color is on the most it can go. This is with it off. Honestly, I think it starts to look good right around a low, but I don't use it because it starts making things look pink. That's just what Sony Live Color has always done. So what do you do? You go and you raise saturation a bunch. Okay, let's go to 65. Okay, and if we go to 65 color, more of the same you're still not beating the Bravia or, or the TCL. Let's go to 100. Let's just say, fuck it. Uh, clearly, I've made it look desaturated on purpose. Let's just go to 100. Even if you go to 100, all you're doing is oversaturating the wrong areas of the screen. You aren't giving it the color depth and color coverage that it doesn't have. The TCL, by way of fact, not opinion, has more color coverage than the Sony Bravia 9. That means that colors can be pulled on that the Sony can't do, okay? And there is no, I mean, you can go in here all day, every day. Reality creation's on 30s. You can go ahead, raise that up to 100 if you want. There isn't a setting in the Sony Bravia 9 that allows you to get around how bad it looks. A smooth gradation high, what are we going to do? I mean, we can fumble around here all day. Blur reduction is off because if we turn it on, you know, that's where we start running into some issues with it being dimmer now. I mean, really, there is nothing you can do. It's on auto, and in HDR, if you go auto, it defaults to Beachy 2020. And you can see here, because if I go Rec 709, it gets washed. DCI looks washed. Adobe RGB looks washed. And only BT 2020 will have color. There is nothing, hear what I say, nothing you can do to save the Sony Bravia 9. You just saw me go through every single setting. I mean, let's go to gradation preferred over brightness preferred, and now it gets really dim, okay? Uh, let's go and restore our gamma back to zero, okay? Look, there is nothing, and you're seeing it in real time, not a thing you can do to save the Bravia 9 from its fate. The Bravia 9 lost to the TCL QM8. It did. And I think, again, and that one example, the TCL just wasn't pushed as hard because I've been spending even more time on the TCL. And after doing that, it pulls way ahead of what Sony can do. And we'll go back to the mode that I had set up, which is standard, right? But again, there's very little you can do to save it. I mean, this is, this is what we just created here. Not great. And this is where I took it to try to get it close to the TCL. There is nothing you can do. Sony is not going to be a TCL and it's not going to beat a TCL. 
not the QM8 51G. And you can pretend like it isn't so all day, every day. It's the brighter TV. Look at the highlights. I mean, it's got the better depth in this example. The colors are popping like you wouldn't believe. And there are people that genuinely believe when I make this kind of content that I'm just being unfair. I also want to do a sound check. Now, this is going to be probably very hard for you to hear on camera, but I'm going to fire my weapon, okay? That's the sound of the TCL QM851G on 30 volume, okay? On the Sony, on the same 30 volume right there, this is what it sounds like. Now let's turn on TCL and see how overpowering it gets. It's a tin can. TCL undoubtedly sounds like a tin can. And, or rather the Sony, sounds like a tin can. The TCL with that subwoofer from Ankyo is it, just hitting way different. Like, way different. And I've had these issues on Sony TVs for years now, where I've mentioned the sound quality on Sony is just not up to par with what I would have expected out of a premium product. To which I get all the excuses in the world. Oh, you're doing something to make the Sony worse because you have a Sony Vendetta. I do not. This video, I will say for the millionth time, is being shot on a Sony Bravia, or not a Sony Bravia, a Sony Alpha. Uh, what is it? Alpha 4, A7 4, right? I mean, an A7 IV, go look up the price tag of one of those things. You don't give Sony that kind of money because you hate Sony, okay? I don't care you don't like the information if you don't like it. Facts are facts. You're not entitled to your own facts. You can have opinions about them, yeah, sure. But the facts will remain what they are. And as it stands, the Sony Bravia is just too washed out and it lacks a lot in the way of, again, quality. Like actual color quality, brightness over the TCL QM851G. And I was wrong. I, I have to say I was wrong on two accounts last night. The first account that I was wrong on is that this is as high as the TCL can go. It was not. I put more work into it and the TCL pulled ahead of the Sony by a lot. Another thing is that when you talk about what can and can't happen, well, it, it, it's uncomfortable for everybody to realize this, but Sony is not as good as we thought it was. And again, it, it goes back to like the fact that TCL had more room to grow. And seeing it here over the course of just 24 hours of putting work into it, I mean, you kind of, you see what it is. Now, again, the second thing that I was wrong about is the fact that the price point is not two times. When you literally get a calculator out, I guess I'm bad at math, and you do the sale price right now, which both are on right now, $9.99 for the TCL, $29.99 for, um, for the Sony Bravia 9, the Sony Bravia 9 is literally three times more expensive than the TCL, and it does not pre provide a three times benefit, in my opinion, professionally and personally. Because when you lose in color volume, when you lose in audio, when you lose in the ease of initial setup, when you lose in the term of weight and and that that pulling it and moving it around, when you move when you lose in terms of again black level control, I mean, what are you freaking winning here? And, and that's really like, you know, I try to extend all the branches where I can to Sony fans, but you know what? I don't think that's really fair of me to do. So in the interest of fairness, I sat with the TCL more and saw, could it go further? And it did. And I, you know what? I did the same thing for the Sony and Sony stayed right the hell where it was. It didn't go a tick higher or lower. Now, the problem with this is that the TCL has literally like so, like I was saying, even in that video, it has so many features and so much so much room for growth. You could do so many different creative calibration setups to the point where your picture can just look in a way the Sony Bravia 9 cannot look. I showed you that in this video in the beginning when we went through and we gone through all those settings from like literally like a reset, a factory reset mode. And, and honestly, dude, like this is what I try to tell people. You've heard Sony be the top you've heard it be the best you've heard everybody glow about it times change okay people don't 
You will never be able to change the mind of somebody who believes what they believe and they're stuck in their way and no one can tell them anything else. You can't change somebody like that. And that's fine. I'm not here to change people. I'm not a politician. I don't need your vote, right? I don't need you to endorse me. I need to be honest because that's what I build my brand on. And those who appreciate honesty, I'm glad to have you here. For those who don't, I mean, still glad to have you here, I guess. I mean, I'm bursting your bubble pretty much, but at least I'm honest enough to do so. Because when you look at the depth coming off of the TCL, look at the color quality. Tell me which one's the $3,000 image. You can't. You literally can't do it. And, and, and that's the part that people are like, oh, the TCL is nice, but I don't know what you did to the Sony. Uh, I don't know, man. It just feels like you got a vendetta against Sony. Always negative videos. It's not a negative video. Get that, that rhetoric out of your head, okay? It's not negative because it's a real review. It's positive because now you have a real review. It's negative if I sit here and I only highlight where Sony looks the best and I only tell you the best things about Sony. That's a negative review because essentially that means that you will never know how it actually performs. And if you don't know how it actually performs, you don't know what the hell you are actually buying. You're literally thinking that you're getting one thing and, and then you end up getting something entirely different. And I don't think that's fair to anyone who literally has money to spend on a product. And that's just as real as it gets. Now, again, people are not going to agree with that. And that's fine. We, are, again, are not here for people's feelings. And I have to say that because it's 2024 and so many people are so dang sensitive all the time about every little thing. But what I will tell you is this. What the TCL has managed to do truly has shocked me in ways I didn't expect to be shocked and I just see it like this is the no brainer TV. This is the TV you go for, period, if you want a quantum dot. You don't go with Samsung, right? Because they're overpriced. And again, TCL has better control of black levels nine times out of 10 over a Samsung, okay, with their QLED line. The only thing you really should be buying from Samsung is their quantum dot OLED. The rest is kind of like meh, right? But then you look at what TCL is doing, and, and it's just, it's mind blowing. It really is because you, you see it right here taking on a $3,000 flagship Sony. Granted, Sony showed their ass this year, and this isn't the best Sony can do. I will, I will actually say that because I believe it. This isn't the best Sony could do. If Sony made a TV like their life depended on it, it would be the best TV we've ever seen. But therein lies the problem. Sony is so busy taking like ridiculous compliments of adulation where like literally I was on one of Sony's pages and one of the people said, we were amazed about a product that released and they were like, wow, Sony, God forever. And one of the workers at Sony literally came out and said, as long as you know, or you already know, or something to that effect. Do you have any idea the amount of ego it takes to be able to say something like that, think that, and then post that on a global corporate social media site? I mean, like, Sony is so far up their own asses, and they're feeling themselves so much, they don't even realize they've lost this year. They have no idea how much of an L they've actually taken. Like, they aren't the best mini LED TV. They no longer have a quantum dot OLED competitor because the A95L was last year. And it doesn't matter if they manufacture it this year and keep manufacturing it. It's still an old TV that needs a price cut at this point because it's a year old. And it gets to a point where it's like, Sony is taking a lot of L's and their fandom, for whatever reason, they're, they're, they're like delusional. They just run with old things that Sony did and they don't talk about the new things that Sony is doing wrong. And that's fine, but you're seeing it for yourself because I think anyone who's not biased and who's honest with themselves will be straight up and say, hey, you know what? All right, Sony, Sony's come a long way from where they were and I think now we're at the point of diminishing returns. We are not dealing with the same old quality Sony. Now we're dealing with, well, today's Sony. And again, not a dig on Sony. I really don't care one way or another what TV wins, what TV loses, yada, yada. What I do care about is that when I pay for something, I am getting what I'm expecting. And I expected the Bravia 9 to be way better than it is and what it turned out to be. I mean, look at this example. Everything on the Bravia 9 has to basically be really dim and really dark in HDR comparatively to what TCL is offering. When you really sit there, and again, you have a master TV calibrator like myself go in there and literally put the settings in, it, there's no comparison. 
And yeah, sure, there are people that are going to try to sit up here and sell you the Sony, but I'm not going to sell you either of them. I'm not saying don't buy Sony in favor of the TCL and don't buy anything else in favor of this. I'm saying like, if you want the value for the dollar, there's a smart and a dumb way to do things. And I think it's really stupid to pay three times, hear this, really fucking hear this. Like, it's psychotic. You're going to pay three times the price for a TV that's getting beaten by one that's like literally three times less money. How stupid do you have to be? That's like those people that like buy houses in fucking California when they could go out to Texas with the same amount of money and walk away with a mansion. It, it's literally fucking stupid just for the namesake. Oh, but I live in, you know, San Francisco, California. Okay, you just paid for a name. Congratulations, you're a fucking idiot. Your money went less far and you have less of a quality of life, less luxury because you wanted to buy a namesake. And by all means, there are people that buy a namesake, but I think that's what we're seeing in society right now. We see people that are so willing to buy into a name stake that they don't realize that that's all they're getting and again that's all you're getting here on the bravia 9 you're getting the name of sony you're not getting the quality that sony usually is supposed to mean and i'm showing you that in real time and i'm showing you with the most thorough of examples and i'm showing gamers this specifically because i've received the question a lot yeah okay but how's the bravia 9 for gaming trash undoubtedly trash hdr gaming garbage again we haven't done sdr yet but based off of what I've seen here, I don't really know that there is a reason to, because when it looks this damn bad, like really, I'm, I'm here in one of the most popular shooters in existence, Borderlands 3, Borderlands 4 is on the way, no, they didn't put me up to saying that, okay, I'm just saying, like, when you see freaking a popular game, AAA game that everybody's gonna play, multiplat game, this is about as, like, general of a game as you can get, it's like, Everyone's probably going to play this game at some point or another, okay? And you're seeing it. You're seeing what the different quality would be, what it wouldn't be. And I just don't, I don't see three times the price out of that Sony. Now, I can harp on that all day, and I sh I'm sure a lot of people will be like, okay, yeah, but you're just harping on it at this point because we get it. You don't like the Sony. And that's where I need you guys to understand. It's not that I don't like the Sony. I have no personal emotions invested in a television, and I don't think people realize that. I do not care what a product, a piece of plastic glass and more plastic has to offer me. I have money to spend on it if I have it. And if it's a good product, great. I'll get enjoyment out of it. If not, I'll move on to the next. But what I've watched is like this society where people wrap identity around a plastic, uh, you know, product going, oh, it's amazing. I love this. It's it's wonderful. It's the best thing ever. And it's like, dude, it's it's a product. Just use it and enjoy it. Like, I don't understand the fandom around it. I don't. But I also wanted to do my my reviews differently from how everybody else does them. They want to show you test patterns like a really fucking bright flower on a black background where the Sony Bravia 9's local dimming will dim that. Nobody, and I'll say this, nobody is watching a fucking flower on a black background. We're playing Borderlands 3, okay? Waiting for Borderlands 4. We're playing our annual games like Mortal Kombat and all that good shit because we're playing our annual franchise games. Nine times out of ten. We're not sitting here like, well, I guess I've got to watch a flower on a black background or some test patterns. No, this is a real world review. How you will use it with real content that you could buy in the store, okay, and hook up to your shit. That's, that's, that's what I make my reviews based off of. Not off of some fictitious shit that nobody cares about, right? Yes, reference accuracy is important to those who value it, but to the vast majority of consumers, we don't care. We want a good TV that's going to make us feel important and happy in our games and in our content, like we're in our worlds or in our universes and whatever. Again, there are moments where the Sony Bravia 9 can look nice, but every time you look at the Sony Bravia 9, you go, oh, that's, that's a good picture. Okay, follow it up with a question that you need to ask yourself. Is it three times the money better? Are you really willing to pay three times the price just for the picture? I don't I, I don't think I've ever seen a TV genuinely worth three times the price of their competitors. I don't think I've ever seen that. Not with any TV I have ever looked at. And I think this is, again, more of the same. You're not, you're not going to see it. You're not going to find three times the price difference of quality. And that's as real as it gets. So now in real time, what we're going to do... I'm going to go back to my little thing here. We're going to switch games so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on here. And I'm going to go to, uh, let's say, some Need for Speed, okay? And in real time, 
I'm just going to go here, okay? So you can see this is very real. And I'm going to go to Need for Speed Underground, okay? Or Unbound. <laughs> I'm so used to the OG stuff. No, we're playing the uh, Unbound game because they won't make a Unreal Engine version of what we want, okay? HDR 10 kicks on. You can see it. And the top left-hand corner on the TV, we're in HDR, and now we're driving around. Now, immediately, you can notice quite a few things. The first is that the Sony and the Samsung, not the Samsung, the TCL, so used to working with Samsungs, they both look good. They both have great picture quality, but it's the TCL that has the better color by far. Like, by freaking far. Sony is dimmer, so details are retained better. But at the end of the day, if I wanted more detail, I could just lower the brightness of the TCL and then I'd give the detail the detail back. So that's not really a win for Sony. And, and I'm looking at things like highlight detail and most importantly, like realistically, like the immersion. Like when I look at the TV, what is giving me that like I keep looking over vibe? And I'll say like in this example, as I drive through the city, it's about equal. I look at the Sony because the blacks are really deep in this example, very inky. And then I look at the TCL and I'm noticing more of the same. And the TCL actually has more like it's like a smoother TV, if you will. And, and the Sony is more responsive, right? Like so the refresh rate feels instantaneous. You know, it, it, it makes it feel nice. The TCL just has this like cinematic smoothness to it all the time, though. And that's a very nice feeling. And then again, when you look at the color quality, the TCL, again, is just for the win. I mean, people tell you Sony's colors are better. Um, no. I'm going to go into photo mode so we can really see this. Um, look at the foliage. Literally just look at the foliage. Sony is blue, right? That is not what it looks like outside, guys. Like, at all. But the TCL is maintaining proper foliage. Where Sony is just way too cool. I have been complaining about this for a plethora of years saying, hey, listen, Sony, your TVs are just way too damn blue. And nobody at Sony changes it because, you know, I guess they still think they're like gods because their fans keep telling them as much. But in reality, they are mortal men and women making a really mediocre product. And the example here, the leaves on the ground look nice and dark and detailed. But then you kind of catch on to Sony's game. Anytime there's something that should be dark, like leaves or anything that has like shadow information to it where it needs to be a little darker, they basically crank up the bright the, the, the darkness to really give that impact. Great. OK, fine. And TCL isn't doing that. But at the same time, when you look at examples like this, they kind of are very similar. I mean, again, Sony with cranking up the contrast through darkening everything. That's their secret, right? Everything that has a shadow gets a, a darkness enhancement. I, I got it. But at the end of the day, that's not really correct because when you look at a road, there is going to be a moment where, you know, grass is going to look a little bit more, uh, not pale, but a little bit more not contrasty, right? That's a little bit more natural. Not everything in the world has crazy stark contrast. And what TCL does is they, they can go between extreme contrast and then giving you really open shadows which i think is really special now tcl could stand to have a bit more of, of the sharpness we go down here in the blades of grass and i would like to see a little extra sharpness just a hair maybe or so of contrast i think that's something even maybe a software update can fix but again against the bravia 9 tcl is doing great i really would like to see things like the background dark on the TCL like what we have on the Sony. I believe that how Sony is going about background information is correct because that looks like a city. It's all rendered perfectly. It makes sense where this, not so much. This is a little light. And again, that's where Sony has its strengths. So if you thought I was only gonna say the TCL is amazing and the Sony's trash, you're wrong because that's not the case. However, in an example like this, the TCL provides the more enjoyable picture because of the color palettry that Sony isn't hitting. And Sony, to get their TV to look as vibrant as possible to make you walk out of the store with it, they use the color blue. And anytime you make your color temperature very blue, primary colors like green, red, and blue become more vibrant as a result. It's a parlor trick. It's smoke and mirrors. Because when you get it home and diverse real world content, it falls apart very quickly because you notice, wait a minute, why is my grass looking closer to the color blue? What's happening to my yellows? They appear pale. I mean, what, what's going on? The more you test, the more you will notice that things have literally fallen apart. And again, 
I'll go over to yellow to show you what I'm talking about. I'm not just going to say something like that. I'm going to show you because I'm very dramatic in the way that if I'm trying to prove a point, I'm going to make sure we all got it, right? So I'm going to go over to the yellow. Remember what I said? Yellows become pale. Well, look at the yellow on the Sony. The yellow is pale. Now, TCL's yellow, not so much. It's vibrant, lifelike. You can see the light in the trees in the background, everything. Sony focuses on two things, darkening the shadows of the image to create contrast around lines, basically anywhere there's a line, right? An edge, right? Like the lines of the tree structure, anything where there's a line of darkness, they darken it to give you that three-dimensional draw and that depth. It's, again, parlor trick, coupled with the really cool, very cold color temperature. That's how they're accomplishing the look of the Bravia 9 and most of their other TVs as of late. But... As somebody who actually reviews TVs, I don't market them. I'm able to, uh, an, again, analyze it and see what's actually going on. And I can tell you that it, it's not really all that impressive. Once you see the trick, you kind of know what's coming. And that's just kind of how it is. Now I'm going to switch to the final example, the final game, which again is my favorite, or one of my favorites anyway, is Tiny Tina's Wonderland. And we're just going to go and we're going to boot that up and we're just going to start. And again, you can see both have good black levels here. Sony is a bit faster at switching. TCL has the way better colors in that example. And the point I want you to get as I do this is just seeing the difference in color quality. Look at the black levels here and, and try to poke out holes, if you will. Like here, the TVs look identical as far as black levels in this example. And again, I think it's one of those things that it, after a while becomes very annoying because... The Bravia 9's biggest thing is like, oh, we have this brand new backlighting system that wraps around objects and creates this insane contrast that typical mini LEDs and most mini LEDs just can't do. And it's like, okay, I hear you, um, but I'm seeing the opposite. See, like when I look at all of this, I'm just seeing they're very similar, like at a glance. There are nuanced differences. Again, Sony, when they're small highlights, they try to blast those out with some extra brightness. In this example, contrast surpasses anything TCL is doing. But again, if you remember what I told you about dark lines, and my character has a lot of dark lines around, you know, again, the scarf and around this and all that, it's they're just darkening it. If TCL had a feature that lets you darken that stuff, it would be amazing. And I'll show you this in real time. If I really wanted to imitate what Sony is doing, I have the shadow level at 8 right now. I could just lower it down as much as I wanted to. Hell, I could even turn it off and look. Now I've got most of what Sony's doing. That's proof right there in real time that it is a literal parlor trick. It's not something that no other brand can replicate no matter what because we're Sony and masters of engineering. No, because there you go. Now that pulls ahead because I just darkened everything. Again, you have to know what TVs are and are not doing. And, and there aren't very many people knowledgeable enough to break this down for you. And this is a long video. Most most people aren't going to watch the full thing, right? But this in and out type of video showing you how pale and how ugly everything is on the Sony, it's not to attack Sony. It's so that you understand and realize you've been sold on, like, marketing, really. Like, the marketing's good. Try Luminous XR Pro you know, Motion XR Pro, Upscaling XR Omega Pro, like stop, Sony. Just let your TV be your TV. You can have your marketing jargon, but don't let that be your only identity. And Sony has fallen into the trap of really the only thing that they have to really claim any kind of, you know, success on is the fact that they're just marketing the hell out of everything unrealistically, in my opinion. Because when you get it home and you put it up against the TCL, you're going to be like, wait a minute, I feel chipped. This isn't at all what I thought was going to go down. And it's not what goes down. Nine times out of ten, you're stuck with some TV that's subpar. And I guess that's okay for those who don't have high standards because they come from older TVs. But if you are aware of what's in the market, you're going to feel really let down really fast given the amount of money that this costs. And again, it's been a common theme with my review. I've been talking about this the entire review, but it's true. It, it, it's just true. Now, again, small bright highlights like the arrows falling out of the sky. They look great on the Sony, but you know what? They look great on OLED too. For this, if you really just wanted small bright highlights, go with the LG C4 or go with the B4. 
and, and have that really tight pixel level illumination and save money because that's what you'll do. You won't have the quantum dot color, but honestly speaking, when you see what Sony's quantum dot color is like, you're probably not really going to care very much because their colors are very weak and muted. I don't know if it's because they believe in the film quality. I don't know. I mean, literally, I have no idea what would possess Sony to constantly make washed out televisions that don't pop, but they need to stop because they're not going to win against an actual review. I mean, look at this. We walk up in a corner, we look at color, we look at contrast, and TCL wins. We go to a different corner. Let's pick this one. It's darker, whatever, okay? We look at it, TCL wins. It has far more color. Sony is not getting rid of this. This is their competition. And all of their fanatics and all of their fans wanting to pretend like this doesn't look better than that I mean, you guys saw it. You remember at the beginning of the video how I started it off saying, hey, listen, uh, we'll start from the base mode and we'll go through. And that's what it looks like. Uh, this is what Sony would have looked like without my settings, by the way. So if you buy a Bravia 9 and you want it to look better, join for $4.99. Get my settings. That's the only way you're going to get anywhere close to what TCL is offering. Because if you just live with what Sony gave you, I mean, this, this, is, this is your reality. Dim or like really washed out because like again and mind you this is after i put settings in let's go ahead and reset the fps mode and you'll see what it looks like reset the default this is what they give you you paid three thousand fucking dollars for this shit <laughs> i mean like i would be pissed i would be so fucking pissed i really would and i'd take that bitch back to the store like that day i'm not about the game like that I'm in a game like this, and that's where I get you. So if you buy the Bravia 9, by all means, use my settings if you want to see what I'm talking about here and how good the Bravia 9 looks in this video. It is only because of me. It is not because Sony and their engineers did the work for you. And again, you're, you're seeing it. You're seeing the highlights blast off of the TCL in a way that Sony's just not doing. The colors, the depth, all of it, it just looks so beautiful. I mean, that reflection over there, there are moments where TCL just you drop slams like neck slams the sony and it's again i've been saying that for 32 minutes no guy is going to go on for 32 minutes telling you how big of a difference there are when he's a professional literally doing this across thousands of tvs okay over the course of what almost a decade now i mean i'm not gonna sit here and tell you that one tv is better or worse if one's not better or worse the tcl beats the sony you want an HDR gaming champion? Get yourself the TCL. Join my membership for $4.99, snag my settings, and walk away with a TV that can destroy the Bravia 9. Because to be fair, by default, the TCL, right, doesn't just beat the Bravia 9. You have to put work into it. Again, as far as like to this level, but it does beat it. I'll show you that by going FPS mode. And then we'll do it again on the Sony as well. This will be the last example before the video ends, but I think it's a powerful one. We're going to go for the Sony. We're going to make sure that we're all reset. Okay. Reset the picture. Yes. Okay. And then again on the TCL as well, we're going to go to settings and you're going to see it in real time. It'll, it'll be very, very clear. Okay. I'm going to go to restore. Uh, well, I don't want to reset all custom settings for the current picture mode because it's in, in, you know, game mode but you guys can see it these are the settings there's really nothing there it is what it is actually no fuck that i'll just reset it and what happens happens all right and then you can clearly see it reset default to default uh spoiler bravia 9 ain't taking a win so even if youtubers wanted to lie right and whip tvs out of the box and be like oh sony's so amazing they can't explain why tcl has more color and it looks better. And you likely haven't heard this from anybody. It has more depth. It's less hazy. Look at the color difference here. Th this is literally like game mode to game mode. This is what you're not seeing in those other videos glowing about the Sony. And again, I've been going on over 30 minutes now telling you this because this is something you need to see if you have that kind of money to spend and you don't want to get ripped off. I'm doing my best to save everybody money and tell you if you've got three grand, do the smart thing and just get you a fucking 85 or 98 inch TCL QM8 and call it a fucking day, man. Don't be stupid and buy the Bravia 9 and wonder why your shit looks hazy and why you're not getting that fucking immersion because I'm showing you in real time. Hopefully this resonates with somebody who maybe just didn't know for those who are stuck in their ways. Oh, well, but that being said, I want to thank you guys for watching the number one brand in honesty. And until the next video, I'll see you guys later.